去过远望，能够实现有多棒？只有哆啦 A 梦可以带着我实现梦想。Hello. Today's going to be the second installment in my Trevor Abroad series. Today we're going to be talking about voltage, voltage converters, plugs, plug adapters, and what you'll need for your study abroad. That took me a little bit of figuring out, which I hope I can maybe help clarify some of your questions, maybe that I had. So let's talk about plug adapters and different styles of plugs. And then a lot of different countries they have a different style of plugging than what your host country is. Like here's the one from the United States. And it's clearly different than the one from China. And then I also have this one. I'm not sure the region, but you see it's just like two little prongs. So in just like three different regions, you have like all these different styles of plugins. Well, what a plug adapter is, you're able to plug in the different, like different ends of your device, like a power cord or a power strip, into the back of the this adapter. Like this is the one I have for China, and it enables you to plug it into the socket there. So you can see, I just have to plug it in, and as long as this is dual voltage, which we'll talk about later, you can just plug it into the socket, and it works just fine. But without this adapter, you're not gonna really be able to plug your device into their socket. These are really cheap. Um, I got this one off Amazon, and I have three of them because I don't know like how many adapters I'm gonna need. So I thought three is a good solid number. I don't think I'll need any more than that. But yeah, these are just really cheap. Just you can find them anywhere. Like I found this one on Amazon. So, but yeah, just a nifty little device and very crucial to have for your study abroad trip. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is voltage and how it can affect you. Different regions have different voltages they run on. So when you plug an item to a circuit, like a plug-in socket, you get so much volts of electricity to power that object. So for instance, in the United States, we run on 110 volt current, whereas China, they run on like a 220. Now, what that means is, say I plugged in my Nintendo DS charger here, just the average one that came with my DS when I bought it a few years ago. But the problem is, and if you look like on your item, you won't be able to see on this camera, but it says that it runs on 110 volts. So, which means actually this one actually is 100. Which means you can put in 100 volts of electricity into this and it will work fine, but if you overload it, it's going to blow up and possibly harm my DS. So if I went to China, let's say I just plug this into my adapter here, plug this into the wall, it would short out the charger and probably blow up my DS because it's way too much electricity for the device to handle. That's why it's important to know how much electrical current a device is allowed. So you may ask yourself, what do I do if I need to take items that only have a 110 volt current and use them over in a region where they run on a higher electrical voltage. Well, there's a couple of ways you can go about this. The first way I'm going to describe, I'm not really familiar with because it's not the option that I'm doing, but you may want to research it yourself a little bit more. But there's these things called voltage converters, and like I've seen, they look kind of bulky. Like it's, I've seen some that are just like a big like square brick, and some that's even a little bit bigger. Well, I guess what you do is you plug that device into their socket. You can set like what voltage you want to be converted to. So, say I went to China and use this device. I take their 220 volt current and get toned down to 100 volt current, and I can use something like my DS charger here. But I heard that they're bulky. They can be heavy. They sometimes I've heard they can like let out a bad smell. Like I just heard a lot of negative things about them. So I went to different re or the different route, and the different option for you could be. To make sure all your items are dual voltage, meaning that no matter like where you go, you can plug in that device into that socket and it works just fine. So take take my DS charger again. Like I said, this one is a hundred volts, and I won't be able to use it in China because it will just short it out. And I'm gonna like my plan is to bring my DS because I'm gonna have some free time and you know. I just want to kill time, you know, play the DS, but what am I going to do when it dies? Because this isn't going to work. Well, what I opted to do was buy a dual voltage AC charger adapter. And you can see right there, it has 110 slash 120 volts, making it a dual voltage adapter charger. And I mean, this was a real cheap one again, I bought on Amazon. And it's not made by Nintendo, but 
you know, it does work charging my DS here, so in theory it should work over there in China. So all I gotta do is plug this into my handy adapter here and it should work just fine. It's more it shouldn't short this and it shouldn't short my DS out. So dual voltage is to me the way to go. So how can you tell if your item is dual voltage? If you look on the back of something like your laptop battery, most laptop batteries are already gonna be dual voltage, so it's gonna convert within this box itself the electrical current coming out from the wall and make sure it doesn't blow up your computer. And how you can tell it's dual voltage on any item, if it says 100, 200, and 40 V, it means that it's dual voltage because it can accept from 100 to 240 volts without blowing up your device. And like I said, your laptop battery, if you're going to take your laptop abroad, should already be dual voltage. Like, it doesn't seem to be a thing that you have to worry about these days. So definitely just look on any device and if it has 100 to 240 volts that means it's going to work fine in your host country. I've heard things you shouldn't take such as hair dryers. I mean I'm a guy I don't really use a hair dryer but for you women they say like hair dryers are just really easy to like blow and just it's more like convenient to just buy one abroad like when you get to your host country than to take yours and it's most likely to blow up anyway. The last thing I'm going to show you is more for convenience purposes, but also it's like a combination of the two things I've talked about in this video. And that's this worldwide power strip. Uh, it's actually a pretty nifty device, and my friend from China recommended me investing in one of these because she said in China, you know, there's like plugins are kind of short. Like, if you go to a hotel, there might be one plug in. But I figured it never hurts to have an extra plug in China or anywhere, really. So, here's what it looks like. It's kind of short, the cord's not very long, but this device accepts plugs from any country, which is what it says right there on the box. So, again, here's my little power thing for China, my adapter, plugs right in. The thing with this device though, the plug here is for the United States plug-in, so I'd actually need one of these devices to plug in, but this thing's already in adapter within itself, so that's not no big deal. The con of this thing is it's kind of sh like short, like and like you know, say you plug in like something like a DS charger, you know, it's gonna take up room. And speaking of that, another negative is I actually would have to use an adapter for my DS charger to plug into here because you have to have a grounded wire for it to complete the connection. You can't just say I plug my regular disc charger in. Even though it plugs in it won't make that connection because it doesn't have the grounded wire part. So I'd actually have to use my adapter, plug this puppy in here, plug it in here. So you can see it's kind of a wonky kind of setup but it works still so I'm not gonna complain. Of course I won't be using this charger because it's blow up my DS. I'll be using this puppy right here. And again, this is dual voltage, so it will accept up to 250 volts of electricity. So you don't have to worry about this puppy, you know, blowing up on you. And it does offer surge protection. And I'm gonna get a little shot of this box, so if anyone cares to really look at it. Features. And it says ideal for televisions, computers, VCRs, printers, faxes. So, definitely a nifty little device to have. One last thing to consider is possibly using a USB to charge a device. I had originally thought about using a USB for my Nintendo DS until I found my dual voltage charger. It's just another method of charging. I know it can be a longer time to charge the device because it's just running through your computer and computer uses electricity too so it takes a lot longer than just having a direct like, connection with the uh, socket but say a device such as an iPod you know if you're not comfortable with plugging in like your iPod to a little wall charger then maybe just run through USB I know for Nintendo DS's they have them and I even buy the rechargeable batteries and they had an option for uh, charging through a USB port
So just USB if you want to consider it. It's another way to charge an item. And that's going to be it for this video. I'm hoping that this video has helped to clarify your concerns on voltage, voltage converters, plug adapters, what you need. Generally, you're going to need a plug adapter. And if your device is already dual voltage, like, like my laptop cord or this plug charger, you don't need a voltage converter. You just need the adapter. But if your device isn't, like my DS charger here, you need to either opt for a dual voltage item or get the converter. So if you have any questions, just feel free to post in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, my next video I think I'm going to do is going to be like maybe my top 10 items I bought that I think are going to be useful for anyone. So you definitely see this travel power strip. So look forward to that video in the near future. Until next time, this is Brett and I'll see you later.